My name is Tiffany Q, and welcome to my ABRSM Grade 5 Theory Lessons series, where I record snippets of my live lessons with my students. Please note that this is not a substitute for a textbook. If you are preparing for the theory exam, I would still recommend having a teacher to guide you through both the coursework and exam paper preparation. So first of all, um, when we are learning about rhythm for grade five, it's important to be very familiar with the note values. Okay, so I'm going to go through some basic note values first and their corresponding rests. So I'm just going to skip a little space here. I'm going to go down here because this is probably something that you're very familiar with, that there is a semi-brief and it's worth four beats or fourth crotchet beats. So I'm going to label all of these. And the semi-brief rest, um, if I have a line here in the manuscript, it looks sort of like this rectangle, um, and it kind of hangs underneath the line. Okay, so that's quite important, the position of the rest, because that will differentiate the semi-brief rest from the minimum rest. They look the exact same, it's just the positioning of them. Okay, so now that we have the semi-brief, I just want to fill you in on this one here, which is the brief. So this may be a new one, it's not quite popular, so that's the brief. So the word, or the prefix semi here, means half, okay? Semi-brief means half of a brief. Like the word semi-circle is half of a circle. So if the semi-brief is only half and the brief is full thing, this one is actually eight crotchet beats, yeah? You can think of this in any way you want, you know, eight crotchet beats or two semi-briefs. The rest of a uh, brief, if I have my manuscript and music, it actually looks like the semi-brief rest, but it's tilted 90 degrees. So um, it's kind of skinny and long and it stands up like this vertically. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to fly through the rest. Then we have the minimum, which is worth two crotchet beats. So we're sort of dividing into two. And the minimum rest, as I said before, looks identical to the semi-brief rest, except it sits nicely on the line instead. Okay, so it's the positioning of it. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the semi-brief rest in a second as well. The semi-brief rest is also known as a full bar rest or a whole bar rest. I'll be going through this in a lot more detail when we study groupings and rests, but in music, if we have a bar that has no notes in it, so no pitches in it, it's completely silent, it doesn't matter what time signature we're in, we need to use that semi-brief rest to indicate it. Even if it's like 2-4 time and we have an empty bar, we still use a semi-brief rest, not a minimum rest. Okay, so the rule here is if it's empty, doesn't matter what time signature it is, okay, two, four, three, eight, I don't know, seven, eight, whatever it is, okay, if it's, as long as it's empty with no pitches, no notes, we use a semi-brief rest. So that would also be a whole bar rest. Continuing here, if we divide a minimum in, in half, we get the crotchet. If we divide a crotchet in half, we get quavers. That's half a crotchet. And then we keep going. Divide the quavers in half, or you can say divide the crotchet into four. We get semi-quavers. Finally, if we divide a crotchet into eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we get demi semi quavers. Okay, 
Okay, back to the rests. The crotchet rest. Um, it's kind of a funny symbol, looks like that. It's quite distinct. And then the quavers, one quaver rest, looks kind of like a comma with this line coming out of it. Semi quavers, we'll, we'll have two of those. And then demi semi quavers, we have three. Okay, so um, that's a bit messy. Just like the actual notes, we have the three beams going across, or the two beams, or the one beam. So the beam in this case is the line going across. Okay, so we call that beam in in music. So yeah, I think that's pretty much what you need to know. If you keep going, we can divide that again into hemi, demi, semi quavers, but they don't really test you on that for the grade five. So I think this is kind of the basic note values that you need to know. And once you're familiar with these, I think it's important to sort of be a bit flexible with how you think. So for example, if you did see four demi semi quavers, so four of these guys, you know that that is the equivalent to one quaver because eight of them is equal to one crotchet so if half of them, which is four, will equal to half of a crotchet, which is a quaver. So it's all just maths and fractions, really, and understanding the symbols and the notes. Now we're going to take a look at the dotted note values. I'm going to skip a little bit first to look at a note value that we probably know very well, which is the dotted minimum. So a dot after the note is equal to the note on its own plus half of the note's value, which in this case is a crotchet. Okay, so we know that that equals three beats in total. So that's the exact same principle for any other note value. If we take a dotted semibrief, for instance, that will equal to a semibrief on its own, plus half of a semibrief, which is one minimum. Now that equals six beats. Okay, going down, dotted crotchet is equal to a crotchet, plus a quaver, one, one and a half, or 1.5. And then a dotted quaver is equal to a quaver, plus a semi-quaver, sort of added together. So it's talking about the joint value of these two notes here, okay? That make up this one. So that would be 0 0.75. Now, I think at this point, there's really no um, importance with these decimals here. I'm just sort of showing that so you can see that it divides by two each time. Um, and then probably the last one that you might see here is the dotted um, semi-quaver, which is a semi-quaver plus a demi-semi-quaver. Okay, so that's all fine. Um, other than knowing the dotted notes, I think it might be a good idea to sort of familiarize with your, yourself with the popular combinations. So if you have a dotted uh, crotchet plus a quaver in music, you see those two next to each other, you know that that equals one minimum. And then it's the same if we keep dividing it into two. Okay, so dotted quaver, semi quaver is also a popular rhythm that we might see. So just kind of instinctively, you must know that that equals a crotchet. And then finally, this one is also really popular and tends to throw students off. If you see a dotted semi quaver and a, a demi semi quaver, that is equal to the value of a quaver. So these um, three sort of examples just kind of be able to be very familiar with them, so if you see them in the music or in a question, that you know exactly um, what it equals to in total. And if you didn't, you could theoretically just take each note out and add it together. You know, you could break this note down into a, what is that, an, into a, a semi-quaver and a demi-semi-quaver. Then you could add a semi-quaver, demi-semi-quaver, plus a demi-semi-quaver, and you'll, add, you'll get a quaver. So you can do it that way, but I think, you know, for these popular ones, it's a good idea to sort of know them quite well. And then double dotted notes. You guessed it, two dots. So actually same principle really. So double dotted notes are 
just basic note values that have two dots after it, and that equals to a, the note itself, then half of the note, and then a quarter of the note. Okay? The other way you could do it is just go half, and then another half of the half, which is a quarter. And pretty soon you'll just see a pattern emerging here. So double dotted minimum is equal to a minimum plus a crotchet plus a quaver. And then I'll just give you two more and then we'll finish with the dotted notes. Uh, oops, I skipped one. So the double dotted crotchet is equal to a crotchet plus a quaver plus a semi-quaver, sort of add it together, and then finally the double dotted quaver is equal to a quaver plus a semi-quaver plus a demi-semi-quaver. It's a good idea to write these notes out if they have a question. So they do like asking things in English, in words. Um, things like, how many semi-quavers can you find in a double dotted, I don't know, minimum? So then you need to kind of write out, okay, what are they asking? What's a semi-quaver? What's a double dotted minimum? We know what they are, but sometimes it's hard to see them in words because we're so used to seeing them uh, as sort of the notes themselves. So do write that out just to kind of clarify it for yourself. All right, so that is your dotted note values there. So tuplets are those sort of irregular rhythms, okay? And there are four different types that you need to know for your grade five. So the first one is your duplets, and then we have your triplets, then there are the uh, quintuplets, and the sextuplets. So these are the main ones. Now, for anyone watching, um, the triplets are taught extensively in grade three of the ABRSM theory curriculum. Um, so I'll start there because I think that's one that we can relate to a lot. Um, so when we have a basic note value, okay, and we divide it into three equal parts, we form a triplet. And generally with these tuplets, these sort of irregular rhythms, if you like, they are always shown with a number, okay? So you'll see the number over a group of notes and then you'll know it's a tuplet. Okay, so for example, um, if we have three minims like this, with the number three on top, we know it's a triplet. So if they were just regular minims, we'd think that that was, you know, six beats, right? But because it's a triplet, um, triplet minims, that whole thing is actually equivalent to a semi-brief divided into three equal parts. Okay, and then if I divide, you can see a pattern starting to emerge here. If I divide the minims into three, uh, sorry, into two. So I divide that into half, and I get the crotchets here. That is equal to a minimum split into three. Okay, this one here is the probably one of the most common ones, or probably the first um, tuplet that you've seen that usually students see in their kind of in their performance in their in their scores. So this one here is a crotchet divided into three equal parts. And then just kind of continuing down the line. Triplet semi-quavers gives me one quaver. And triplet demi-semi-quavers gives me a semi-quaver. I'm going to move on to the quintuplets now. So if I have five crotchets and you see the number five on top to so say that they are quintuplets that whole thing would equal to a semi-brief um, so it's a semi-brief essentially divided into five equal parts quintuplet quavers give me a minimum 
quintuplet semi quavers. Give me a crotchet. And then quintuplet demi semi quavers. One, two, three, four, five. Gives me a quaver. The sextuplet is actually very, very, very similar to the quintuplets. So, uh, if you know the quintuplets, the sextuplets should be quite easy to um, learn off by heart as well. So, I'm just going to quietly draw these in. All right. Duplets now are when we uh, divide a dotted note into two parts. So if we take a dotted minimum, for example, and we split that into two, um, of course you might think, okay, well, three divided by two is 1.5, and, you know, technically you could write it like that. And I'll explain maybe later on why in some cases we don't divide it like that. Okay, so that's usually in compound time, so I'll get to compound time signatures. But if we are um, in something like, you know, 9-4 time, okay, which is also compound time, but a different compound time, and we want to divide it by 2, then I would have two crotchets with the number 2 on top. And that literally means it's a dotted minimum split into two. So it's actually sort of the same thing as this, but we would use them in different contexts. This next one is quite a popular one. Okay, this is the duplet quavers, is the equivalent of a dotted crotchet split into two. And of course, sometimes we can split that into two dotted quavers as well. And then this one. Duplet semi quavers, we divide that into two, it gives us a. Uh, sorry, sorry, if we have a dotted quaver, and we divide that into two, we get duplet semi quavers. So I feel like the duplets are probably the trickiest to understand. Um, they're not that common. I think this one here is the most common one. Other than being very familiar with these tuplets and knowing their groups and kind of identifying the numbers and just knowing what it kind of equals to, we also need to be prepared to be flexible again. So we need to be able to recognize these different tuplets in different forms because they might not always be as simple as what's being laid out in front of you right now. So what do I mean by that? For example, if I take this one here, so triplet quavers gives me a uh, crotchet. Now the notes inside the tuplets will behave in the same way. So this is a quaver and this second one is also a quaver. If I join two quavers together, it gives me a crotchet. Okay, so I could join these first two quavers into one note and then have the third trip like this. As long as I put the number three on top, I know that this is actually the exact same rhythm as this. Okay, so lots of other ways of writing as well. I could I could um, replace them with rests. Okay, so that could also be the triplet. Um, I could divide the notes. So for example, I could take the first quaver of the triplet and just divide that into two. That's also a triplet. So all of these guys are the exact same as this one here. <laughs> 